my name is Cecilia Lindgren. And I'm Chris Klein. And I'm playing Marjorie Pinchwife. And I'm playing Mr. Pinchwife. And we'll be doing a scene from The Country Wife. <laughs> Tell me, I say. Lord, haven't I told it and a hundred times over? I would try if, in the repetition of the ungrateful tale, I could find her altering it in the least circumstance. For if her story be false, so she is too. Come, baggage, how was it? Oh, Lord, what pleasure. You take to hear it, sure. You take more in telling it, I find. Uh, but speak, how was it? Carried me up into the house, next to the exchange. So, and you two were only in the room? Yes, for he sent away a youth that was there for some dried fruit and china oranges. Did he so? <laughs> Damn him, Fort. Yes, but presently came up the gentlewoman of the house. Oh, was well she did. Uh, but uh, what did you do whilst the fruit came? <laughs> that he kissed me. And a hundred times, <laughs> and told me he fancied he kissed my fine sister, oh. meaning me, you know. <laughs> oh, what? And then he said he loved me with all his soul, and bid me be sure to tell her so, and desire her to be at her window at eleven of the clock this morning, and at that time he would walk under it. So, he was as good as his word, very punctual. <laughs> a pox reward him for it. <laughs> well, and he said if you were not within, he would come up to her. Oh, meaning me, you know, a bud, still. So he knew her certainly. But for this confession, I am obliged to her simplicity. <laughs> uh, but what, you stood very still when he kissed you? Oh, yes, I warrant you. <laughs> Would you have had me discovered myself? Uh, but you said he did some beastliness to you, as you called it. Well, what was? Uh, well, why he put... What? Why he put the tip oh. Oh. of his tongue oh. uh, between my lips and so muscled me. And, oh. 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 and I said I'd oh. bite it. Oh. Oh. An eternal canker season for a dog. <laughs> Nay, you need not be so angry with him neither. For to say truth, he had the sweetest breath I mm -hmm. ever knew. Devil. And you were satisfied with it then, and would do it again? Oh no, not <laughs> unless he should not unless he should force me. <laughs> force you? Oh, changeling. I tell you, no woman can be forced. Oh, yes, but she may sure by one such as he. Oh, for he's a proper, goodly, ooh, strong man. Which is hard! <laughs> Let me tell you, to resist him. So, tis plain she loves him. But the sight, but she has not love enough to make her conceal it from me. But the sight of him will increase her aversion for me and love for him. And that love instruct her how to deceive me and satisfy him, all idiot as she is. <laughs> love. T'was he first gave women their craft, their art of deluding. Out of nature's hands they came plain, open, silly, fit for slaves. <laughs> but damned love. Well, I must strangle that old monster whilst I can deal with him. <laughs> Come, fetch pen, ink, and paper from the next room. Yes, bud. <laughs> Why should women have more invention in love than men? It can only be because they have more desires, more soliciting passions, more lust, <laughs> more of the devil. Oh, oh come, mate. Sit down and write. I but, but I can't do it very well. I wish you could not at all. <laughs> but what should I write for? I'll have you write a letter to your lover. <gasps> oh, Lord, to the fine gentleman, a letter. Yes, to the fine gentleman. <laughs> Lord, sure you jeer. You do but jest. I am not so merry. Come, write as I bid you. What, do you think I'm a fool? 
She's afraid I would not dictate any love to him. Therefore, she's unwilling. Uh, but you had best begin. Indeed and indeed. But I won't, so I won't. Why? Because he is in town. You may send for him if you will. Very well, you would have him brought to you. Is it come to this? I say, take the pen and write, or you'll provoke me. Lord, what do you make a fool of me for? Don't I know that letters are never writ but from the country to London, and from London into the country? Now I am in town, and he is in town too. <laughs> Therefore, I can't write to him. You know. So I'm glad it is no worse. <laughs> She's innocent enough. Yet, you may, when your husband bids you, write letters to people who are in town. Oh, may I so? Mm -hmm. Then I am satisfied. <laughs> Come, begin. Sir. Shan't I say, dear sir? Uh, you know one always says something more than bear, sir. <laughs> write as I bid you, or I will write whore with this penknife in your face. Oh, oh. nay, good bud. Sir. <laughs> Though I suffered last night your nauseous, loathed kisses and embraces, right? Nay, why should I say so? You know I told you he had a sweet breath. Right. <laughs> Let me but put out loathed. Right, I say. Well then. <laughs> well, let's see. What have you written? Though I suffered last night your kisses and embraces. Oh, insolent creature! Where is nauseous and loathed? I can't abide to write such filthy words! <laughs> Once more, write as I have you, and question it not, or I will spoil thy writing with this. I will stab out those eyes that cause my mischief. Oh. Lord, I will. Hmm. Well, let's see. Though I suffered last night your... Nauseous and loathed kisses and embraces. Go on. Yet I would not have you presume that you shall ever repeat them. So. I have read it. On then. I then concealed myself from your knowledge to avoid your insolencies. Insolencies. Insolencies! The same reason now I am out of your hands. So? Makes me own to you my unfortunate, though innocent frolic, of being in man's clothes. <laughs> so. <laughs> that you may forevermore cease to pursue her who hates and detests you. So? Oh, what do you say? Detests you as much as she loves her husband and her honor. I vow, husband, he'll ne'er believe I should write such a letter. What, he'd expect a kinder from you? Come now, your name only. Oh, shan't I say, your most faithful, humble servant till death? Oh. No, tormenting fiend! Oh. I find your style would be very soft. Huh. <clears throat> Come, wrap it up now, whilst I go fetch wax and a candle. And be sure you write on the back, for Mr. Horner. For Mr. Horner. So I'm glad he has told me his name. <laughs> oh, dear Mr. Horner. But why should I send thee such a letter that will vex thee and make thee angry with me? Well, I will not send it. Oh, but then my husband will kill me. Oh, for I see plainly he will not let me love. Oh. Mr. Horner. Oh, oh but what care I for my husband? <laughs> so I will not send it. So I will not send such a letter to poor Mr. Horner. Oh, but then my husband. But oh, what if I writ at bottom that my husband made me write? Oh, but then he'd see it. <laughs> what can I do? Can one have no shift? Uh, a London woman would have a hundred presently. Stay. Ooh. What if I should write another letter, oh. fold it up just like this one, and write on the back for Mr. Horner? Oh, but then my husband would see it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. But yet, either as I'll try. For I, I will not send this letter to poor Mr. Horner. Come what will on't. 
dear, sweet <laughs> Mr. Horner. So, my husband would have me send you a base, rude, unmannerly letter. But I won't. <laughs> would have me forbid you loving me, but I won't. <laughs> so, and would have me tell you, I hate you, poor Mr. Horner, but I won't tell a lie for him. <laughs> there, for I know if you and I were in the country at cards together, so, I could not help treading on his toe underneath the table. <laughs> so, or, oh, or rubbing knees together with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and staring into his face until he saw me. Very well. <laughs> and then looking down and blushing for an hour together. <laughs> but I must make haste before my husband comes. <laughs> Now he has taught me to write letters. <laughs> you shall receive more. You shall receive longer <laughs> ones from me, who am dear, dear, poor, dear, <laughs> Mr. Horner, your most humble friend and Servant to command till death, Marjorie Pinchwife. Oh, stay, I must give him a hint at bottom. <laughs> so now wrap it up just like the other and write on the back for Mr. Horner. I have been detained by a sparkish coxcomb who pretended a visit to me. But I feared it was to my wife. Mm. Uh, what have you done? I, I, bud, just now. Come, let's see it. Uh, oh, what do you tremble for? What, you would not have it go? Here. Oh, 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 oh this is just... Oh. <laughs> Nay, you must not give him that. So I'd been served if I had given him this. Come, where's the wax and seal? Lord, what shall I do now? Nay, then I have it. I pray you let me see it, Lord. What, you think me so errant a fool I can't seal a letter? I will do it. So I will. No, I believe you will learn that, and other things too, which I would not have you. <laughs> so haven't I done it curiously? I think I have. <laughs> For there goes my letter to Mr. Horner. Since he needs me, have sent letters to folks. Tis very well. Uh, but I warrant you would not have it go now? Oh. Yes, indeed. But I would. Bud. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. You are a good girl. <laughs> come, let me lock you up in your chamber till I come back. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure you not come within three strides of the window when I'm gone. For I have a spy in the streets. <laughs> At least, tis well she thinks so. <laughs> if we do not cheat women, they'll cheat us. And fraud may be justly used with secret enemies, of which a wife is the most dangerous. And he that has a handsome one too, and a frontier town, must provide against treachery rather than open force. <laughs> now I have secured all within. I'll deal with the foe without, with false intelligence. <laughs> <laughs>